Electric Light Orchestra The Electric Light Orchestra, ELO, are an English rock band formed in Birmingham in 1970, by songwriters-slash-multi-instrumentalists Jeff Lynne and Roy Wood with drummer Beth Bevan. Their music is characterized by a fusion of Beatlesque pop, classical arrangements, and futuristic iconography. After Wood's departure in 1972, Lynne became the band's leader arranging and producing every album while writing virtually all of their original material. For their initial tenure, Lynn, Bevan and keyboardist Richard Tandy were the group's only consistent members. ELO was formed out of Lynn's and Wood's desire to create modern rock and pop songs with classical overtones. It derived as an offshoot of Wood's previous band, The Move, of which Lynn and Bevan were also members. During the 1970s and 1980s, ELO released a string of top 10 albums and singles, including two LPs that reached the top of British charts, the disco-inspired Discovery, 1979, and the science fiction-themed concept album Time, 1981. In 1986, Lynn lost interest in the band and ceased its operation. Bevan responded by forming his own band, ELO Part II which later became the orchestra. With the exception of a short-lived reunion in 2001, ELO remained largely inactive until the 2010s. In 2014, Lynn reformed the band again with Tandy as Jeff Lynn's ELO, where he resumed concert touring and new recordings under the moniker. During ELO's original 14-year period of active recording and touring, they sold over 50 million records worldwide, collecting 19 CREA, 21 RIAA, and 38 BPI awards. For a period in the mid-1970s, the band saw more success in the United States, where they were billed as the English guys with the big fiddles. From 1972 to 1986, ELO accumulated 20 top 20 songs on the UK singles chart, and 15 top 20 songs on the US Billboard Hot 100. The band also holds the record for having the most Billboard Hot 100 top 40 hits, 20, without a number one single of any band in US chart history. In 2017, the ELO lineup of Wood, Lynn, Bevan, and Tandy were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In the late 1960s, Roy Wood, guitarist, vocalist and songwriter of The Move, had an idea to form a new band that would use violins, cellos, string basses, horns and woodwinds to give their music a classical sound, taking rock music in the direction to pick up where the Beatles left off. Jeff Lynne, frontman of fellow Birmingham group The Idol Race, was excited by the concept. In January 1970, when Carl Wayne left the move, Lynn accepted Wood's second invitation to join the band on the condition that they focus their energy on the new project. On July 12, 1970, when Wood added multiple cellos to a Lynn Penn song intended to be a move B side, the new concept became a reality and 10,538 Overture became the first electric light orchestra song. To help finance the fledgling band, one further move album message from the country was also recorded during lengthy ELO recordings. The resulting debut album The Electric Light Orchestra was released in 1971. It was released in the United States in 1972 as No Answer, the name being chosen because a record company secretary had tried to ring the UK company and get the name of the album, since they were unable to contact them they left a note saying No Answer. 10,538 Overture became a UK top 10 hit. Wood, Lynn and Beth Bevan were the founding members of Electric Light Orchestra. ELO's debut concert took place on April 16, 1972 at the Greyhound Pub in Croydon, Surrey, with a lineup of Wood, Lynn, Bevan, Bill Hunt, keyboards, Andy Craig, cello, Mike Edwards, cello, Wilfred Gibson, violin, Hugh McDowell, cello, and Richard Tandy bass. However, this lineup did not last for long. First Craig departed, and then Wood, during the recordings for the band's second LP. Taking Hunt and McDowell with him, Wood left the band to form Wizard. Both cited problems with their manager, Don Arden, and an unsatisfactory tour of Italy, where the cellos and violins could not be heard over the electric instruments. Despite predictions from the music press that the band would fold without Wood, who had been the driving force behind the creation of ELO, Lynn stepped up to lead the band, with Bevan, Edwards, Gibson and Tandy, who had switched from bass to keyboards to replace Hunt, remaining from the previous lineup, and new recruits Mike de Albuquerque and Colin Walker joining the band on bass and cello respectively. The new lineup performed at the 1972 Reading Festival. Barkus Berry instrument pickups, now sported by the band's string trio, 
allowed them to have proper amplification on stage for their instruments, which had previously been all but drowned out by all the sound of the electrified instruments. The band released their second album, ELO2 in 1973, which produced their second UK Top 10 and their first US chart single, an elaborate version of the Chuck Berry classic rollover Beethoven. ELO also made their first appearance on American Bandstand Show. During the recording of the third album, Gibson was let go after a dispute over money. Meek Kaminsky joined as violinist and Walker left since touring was keeping him away from his family too much. Remaining cellist Edwards finished the cello parts for the album. The resulting album, on the third day, was released in late 1973, with the American version featuring the popular single Showdown. After leaving Wizard Hugh McDowell returned as the second cellist at the end of 1973. For the band's fourth album, El Dorado, a symphony, a concept album about a daydreamer, Lynn stopped overdubbing strings and hired an orchestra and choir instead. Louis Clark was hired by the band as string arranger. The first single off the album, Can't Get It Out of My Head, became their first U.S. Top 10 hit, and El Dorado, a symphony became Mielo's first gold album. Mike de Albuquerque departed the band during the recording sessions as he wished to spend more time with his family, and consequently much of the bass on the album was performed by Lynn. Following the release of El Dorado Kelly Grauchet was recruited as bassist, and in early 1975 Melvin Gale replaced Edwards on cello. The lineup stabilized as the band took to a decidedly more accessible sound. ELO had become successful in the U.S. at this point and the group was a star attraction on the stadium and arena circuit, and regularly appeared on the Midnight Special, 1973, 1975, 1976 and 1977 more than any other band in that show's history with four appearances. Face the Music was released in 1975, producing the hit singles Evil Woman, their third UK Top 10, and Strange Magic. The opening instrumental Fire on High, with its mix of strings and acoustic guitars, saw heavy exposure as the theme music for the American television program CBS Sports Spectacular in the mid-1970s. The group toured extensively from 3 February to April 13, 1976 playing 68 shows in 76 days in the U.S. Their sixth album, The Platinum Selling a New World Record, became their first UK Top 10 album when it was released in 1976. It contained the hit singles Live and Thing, Telephone Line, Rock Aria, and Do Ya, a re-recording of the Move song. The band toured in support in the U.S. only from September 1976 to April 1977 with a break in December then an American Music Awards show appearance in January 31, 1977, plus a one-off gig in San Diego in August 1977. Casey Kasem said that the Electric Light Orchestra is the world's first touring rock and roll chamber group before he played Live and Thing at number 28. A new world record was followed by a multi-platinum selling album, the double LP Out of the Blue, in 1977. Out of the Blue featured the singles Turn to Stone, Sweet Talkin' Woman, Mr. Blue Sky, and Wild West Hero, each becoming a hit in the United Kingdom. The band then set out on a nine month, 92 day world tour, with an enormous set and a hugely expensive spaceship stage with fog machines and a laser display. In the United States, the concerts were billed as the big night and were their largest to date, with 62,000 people seeing them at Cleveland Stadium. The big night went on to become the highest grossing live concert tour in music history up to that point, 1978. The band played at London's Wembley Arena for eight straight sold-out nights during the tour, another record at that time. In 1979, the multi-platinum album Discovery was released, reaching number one on the UK album's chart. Although the biggest hit on the album, and ELO's biggest hit overall, was the rock song Don't Bring Me Down, the album was noted for its heavy disco influence. Discovery also produced the hit Shinny A Little Love their first and only number one hit from 1972 to the present with any of the four major or minor U.S. singles charts on radio and records, R&R, Last Train to London, Confusion and the Diary of Horace Wimp. Another song, Midnight Blue, was released as a single in Southeast Asia. The band recorded promotional videos for all the songs on the album. By the end of 1979 ELO had reached the peak of their stardom, selling millions of albums and singles, and even inspiring a parody-slash-tribute song on the Randy Newman album Born Again, titled The Story of the Rock and Roll Band. During 1979 Jeff Lynne also turned down an invitation for ELO to headline the August 1979 Nebworth Festival concerts. That allowed Led Zeppelin the chance to headline instead. 
In 1980 Jeff Lynne was asked to write for the soundtrack of theme musical film Xanadu, with the other half written by John Farrar and performed by the film star Olivia Newton-John. The movie performed poorly at the box office, but the soundtrack did exceptionally well, eventually going double platinum. The album spawned hit singles from both Newton-John, Magic, a number one hit in the United States, and Suddenly with Cliff Richard, and Yellow, I'm Alive, which went gold, all over the world and don't walk away. The title track performed by both Newt and John and the Yellow, is Yellow's only song to top the singles chart in the United Kingdom. More than a quarter of a century later, Xanadu, a Broadway musical, based on the film, opened on July 10, 2007 at the Helen Hayes Theatre to uniformly good reviews. It received four Tony Award nominations. The musical received its UK premiere in London in October 2015. Casey Kasem called the Electric Light Orchestra a seven man supergroup and amazing for hitting the top 40 a remarkable six times in a one year period from August 1979 to August 1980 before playing all over the world at number 23. In 1981, ELO's sound changed again with a science fiction concept album Time, a throwback to earlier, more progressive rock albums like El Dorado. With the string section now departed, synthesizers took a dominating role, as was the trend in the larger music scene of the time, although studio strings were represent on some of the tracks conducted by Reiner Peach, the overall soundscape had a more electronic feel in keeping with the futuristic nature of the album. Time topped the UK charts for two weeks and was the last TLO studio album to be certified platinum in the United Kingdom until Alone in the Universe in 2015. Singles from the album included Hold On Tight, Twilight, the way life's meant to be, here's the news and ticket to the moon. The band embarked on their last world tour to promote the LP. For the tour Kaminsky returned to the lineup on violin, while synthesizer players Louis Clark and Dave Morgan also joined the band. Jeff Lynne wanted to follow time with a double album, but CBS blocked his plan on the grounds that a double vinyl album would be too expensive in Thiel Crisis and as a result, the new album was edited down from double album to a single disc and released as Secret Messages in 1983. Many of the outtakes were a later released on Afterglow or as B-sides of singles. The album was a hit in the UK reaching the top five, but its release was undermined by a string off bad news that there would be no tour to promote the LP, as drummer Bevan was now playing drums for Black Sabbath and bassist Graukit had left the band during the recording of the album, leaving Lynn to once again record many of the bass parts. Rumors of the group disbanding were publicly denied by Bevanon although Secret Messages debuted at number 4 in the United Kingdom, it fell off the charts, failing to catch fire with the lack of hit singles in the UK, though Rock and Roll as King was a sizable hit in UK, the US and Australia, and a lukewarm media response. By 1983 Bevan was expressing a desire to join Black Sabbath permanently and Lynn and Tandy were recording tracks for the Electric Dreams soundtrack under Lynn's name, however, Lynn was contractually obliged to make one more Yellow album. Lynn, Bevan and Tandy returned to the studio in 1985 as a three-piece, with Christian Schneider playing saxophone on some tracks and Lynn again doubling on bass in addition to his usual guitar in the absence of an official bass player, to record Balance of Power, released early in 1986. Though the single Calling America placed in the top 30 in the United Kingdom, number 28, and top 20 in the States, Subsequent singles failed to chart. The album lacked actual classical strings, which were replaced once again by synthesizers, played by Tandy. The band was then rejoined by Kaminsky, Clark, and Morgan, adding Martin Smith on bass guitar, and proceeded to perform a small number of live ELO performances in 1986, including shows in England and Germany along with U.S. appearances on American Bandstand. Solid Gold, then at Disneyland that summer. The Birmingham Heartbeat Charity Concert 1986 was a charity concert organized by Bevan in Yellow's hometown of Birmingham on March 15, 1986. A hint of Lynn's future was seen when George Harrison appeared on stage during the encore at Heartbeat, joining in the all star jam of Johnny B. Good. Yellow's last performance for several years occurred on July 13, 1986, in Stuttgart, Germany, playing as opening actor Rod Stewart. Ian Lowe effectively disbanded after that final show in Stuttgart in 1986, but there was no announcement made of it for the next two years, during which George Harrison's Lynn produced album Cloud Nine and the pair's follow-up, with Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan and Tom Petty as Traveling Wilburys, Traveling Wilburys Fall. One were released. Bevan, under an agreement with Lynn who co-owned the ELO name with him, continued on in 1989 as ELO Part 2, 
initially with no other former Riello members. Ian Lowe Part 2 released their debut album Electric Light Orchestra Part 2 in 1990. Meek Kaminsky, Kelly Graukett and Hugh McDowell joined the band for their first tour in 1991. McDowell left after that tour. Bevan, Graukett, Kaminsky and Clark recorded a second album, Moment of Truth, in 1994 and toured extensively until 1999. Bevan retired from the lineup in 1999 and sold his share of the ELO name to Jeff Lynne in 2000. Lynn's comeback with Yellow began in 2000 with the release of a retrospective box set, Flashback, containing three CDs of remastered tracks and a handful of outtakes and unfinished works, most notably a new version of Yellow's only UK number one hit Xanadu. In 2001 Zoom, Yellow's first album since 1986, was released. Though billed and marketed as an Yellow album, the only returning member other than Lynn was Dandy who performed on one track. Guest musicians included former Beatles Ringo Starr and George Harrison. Upon completion of the album, Lynn reformed the band with completely new members, including his then-girlfriend Rosie Vela, who had released her own album, Zazu Indiana 1986, and announced that ELO would tour again. Former ELO member Dandy rejoined the band a short time afterwards for two television live performances, VH1 Storytellers and a PBS concert shot at Television City later titled Zoom Tour Alive, that was released on DVD. The planned tour was cancelled. For the next six years, Harvest and Epic Slash Legacy reissued ELO's back catalog. Included amongst the remastered album tracks were unreleased songs and outtakes, including two new singles. The first was Surrender which registered on the lower end of the UK singles chart at number 81, some 30 years after it was written in 1976. The other single was Latitude 88 North. On August 9, 2010, Eagle Rock Entertainment released Live, the early years in the UK as a DVD compilation that included Fusion, Live in London, 1976 along with never-before-released live performances at Brunel University, 1973, and on a German TV show Rock Palace, 1974. The US had a slightly edited release on August 24, 2010. The Essential Electric Light Orchestra artwork was rejigged to feature two different covers. The US and Australian releases shared one design, while the rest of the world featured the other for a new double album release in October 2011. Was released on October 8, 2012. It is an album of new recordings of ELO's greatest hits by Lynn, along with a new song Point of No Return, released to coincide with Lynn's second solo album release Long Wave. These new 2012 albums contain advertisement cards, announcing the re-release of expanded and remastered versions of both the 2001 album Zoom and Lynn's debut solo album Armchair Theater, originally released in 1990. Both albums were re-released in April 2013 with various bonus tracks. Also released was the live album, Electric Light Orchestra Live, showcasing songs from the Zoom tour. All three releases also featured new studio recordings as bonus tracks. Lynn and Tandy reunited again on November 12, 2013 to perform, under the name Jeff Lynn and Friends, Live and Thing and Mr. Dot Blue Sky at the Children in Need Rocks concert at Hammersmith Event in Apollo, London. The backing orchestra was the BBC Concert Orchestra, with Cherry and Allen on lead violin. The success of the Children in Need was followed by much support from BBC Radio 2's DJ Chris Evans, who asked his listeners if they wanted ELO to perform. The 50,000 tickets for the resulting BBC Radio 2's festival in a day in Hyde Park on September 14, 2014 sold out in 15 minutes. Billed as Jeff Lynne's ELO, Lynn and Tandy were backed by the Take That Slash Gary Barlow Band from the Children in Need concert, led by Mike Stevens and the BBC Concert Orchestra. The moniker came out from Lynn as a response to ELO tribute and imitation bands, ELO Part 2, the orchestra, orchestra and the music of ELO, who repeatedly used ELO for promoting their own tours. Cherry Nallen was the lead violinist for the band. The development of modern digital processing added a smoother finish to the work, which led Lynn to reconsider his preference for studio work, hinting at a UK tour in 2015. On February 8, 2015, Jeff Lynne's ELO played at the Grammy Awards for the first time. They performed a medley of Evil Woman and Mr. Dot Blue Sky with Ed Sheeran, who introduced them as a man in a band who I love. On September 10, 2015, it was announced that a new ELO album would be released. The album was to be under the moniker of Jeff Lynne's ELO, with the band signed to Columbia Records. Alone in the Universe was released on November 13, 2015.
The album was Yellow's first album of new material in nearly 15 years. The first track, and single, When I Was a Boy was made available for streaming on the same day and a music video for the song was also released. A small promotional tour followed the album's release which saw ELO perform a full concert for BBC Radio 2 along with ELO's first two shows in the United States in 30 years, both which sold out very quickly. ELO also made rare U.S. television appearances on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel Live and CBS This Morning. A 19-date European tour was announced for 2016, with the band playing the Pyramid Stage at Glastonbury Festival on June 26, 2016. In 2017 they played their Alone in the Universe tour. In 2017 they played at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame during the 32nd Annual Induction Ceremony. The band performed at the Gold Coast 2018 Commonwealth Games Closing Ceremony during the handover presentation of Birmingham 2022 joining rapper Lady Sanity. On October 22, 2018 Jefflin announced that ELO would be embarking on a 2019 North American tour. When ELO emerged, they were often dismissed by musical cognoscenti as Beatles copyists. According to music journalist Simon Price, ELO was arguably the most uncool, even defiantly anti-cool, of the lot, and have been the slowest to be rehabilitated since, they've been sampled by dozens upon dozens of acts, from company flow to the Pussycat Dolls, if you go looking. Every now and then, in my journalistic career, it's been possible to coax a contemporary band to admit to an ELO influence, the Flaming Lips and Super Furry Animals being two examples. But the band with, arguably, the greatest amount of ELO DNRA outside the rock genre altogether, Daft Punk. In November 2016, Jeff Lynne's ELO won Band of the Year at the Classic Rock Roll of Honor Awards. In October 2016, ELO were nominated for the 2017 Class of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the first time. It was the first time that the hall had announced in advance the members of bands who would be inducted. The members of ELO listed were Jeff Lynne, Roy Wood, Bev Bevan, and Richard Tandy. On December 20, 2016, it was announced ELO had been elected to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Class of 2017. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.